The various parts of an airplane, wings, tailplane, fin, etc., are flexible and they may oscillate. The frequency of oscillation is a function of various parameters, such as weight, the amount of fuel in the tanks, speed, Mach, and so on. Let's assume that the wing has two modes for oscillations, in flexion and in torsion. As the speed increases, the two frequencies may become identical. The lift varies with the flexion and with the torsion. An increase of the angle of attack due to the torsion increases the lift and it may increase the wing flexion. Similarly, the flexion motion may create an angle of attack variation increasing the torsion. In some cases, it could lead to a divergent oscillation up to the rupture of the structure. It is called flutter. Flutter can affect all types of aircraft, from general aviation to military and large transport airplanes. It should be noted that bridges are also concerned by a kind of flutter phenomenon. For transport airplanes, regulations request a flight test demonstration that the aircraft is free of flutter. With a sufficient margin, at speeds up to VD and MD, which are designed dive speeds used for the structural sizing. Computations must also show that there is no risk of flutter up to speeds 15% above VD and MD, except above Mach 1. For failure cases, margins are slightly reduced. Today, structure computation by finite elements allows oscillation frequencies of all the aircraft parts to be determined as a function of speed and Mach and therefore the structure can be designed to minimize flutter risk. Preliminary confirmation of the structural model is performed with ground tests. The aircraft is installed on jacks. Some exciters are used to move parts of the airplane at variable frequencies and to check its response. On fly-by-wire airplanes, it may be easier to use the control surfaces to perform these excitations. Flight tests are finally carried out with an excitation of the structure. It may be done either with unbalanced exciters or with the control surfaces. Obviously, the tests are performed in direct law to avoid perturbations due to the flight control stabilization and protection systems. As an example, the wings may be excited symmetrically with the ailerons of the two wings deflected in the same direction, or anti-symmetrically with the ailerons moving in opposite directions. The excitations are usually performed during two to three minutes, with sweeps allowing a frequency scan, first with an increasing frequency, and then decreasing back to the initial value. Excitations are sometimes carried out with pulses. A pulse is an abrupt and brief deflection of a surface. It is the case when an accurate frequency analysis is not required. At the end of each sequence, the airplane is decelerated smoothly in the operational flight envelope. At high altitude and high speed, it may not be possible to perform the test in level flight due to the increasing drag with Mach number. On some airplanes, the engines are sometimes boosted for flutter flights to ease the tests. When it is not possible to perform the test in level flight, it is carried out during a slow dive with maximum thrust. Instead of oscillations at variable frequency, the excitation is performed with pulses. During the descent, the flight test engineer chains the pulses on ailerons, elevator and or rudder. The oscillation frequencies depend on the amount of fuel in the wings and the trim tank. Therefore, all the tests are performed with different loading conditions. As for example, with the various tanks full, half full and empty. For new programs with aerodynamic modifications or even different engines, flutter tests need to be performed. 
However, for derivatives with well-known characteristics, a faster progression in the tests is often possible.